Yeah. So let's talk about BioFi. BioFi is the one inside of that jar. Yes, yeah, yeah the, okay. the Erlenmeyer flask there. That, that is a polypropylene composite. That's one of the first ones we ever made uh, once we figured out how to do white. Now, white is a big challenge for, for bioplastics because uh -huh. you're using generally brown biomass. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard without using a lot of industrial bleaches and terrible chemicals to make it white, but we managed to do that in a sustainable way. So Yeah, it looks pretty white. Yeah. Okay. Essentially, BioFi is, is also a set of technologies that um, is an umbrella over a bunch of different grades and types of plastic. Yeah. Um, now, BioFi is a mixture between cellulose biomass and normal plastic. Our goal is to reduce the amount of normal plastic as much as possible by improving our, our uh, adhesion techniques, improving our compatibilization, improving the techniques that are used to actually do the compounding itself. Today, the average use case is using 40 to 50 percent natural fiber and 40, sorry, 60 to, to 50 percent of, of normal petroleum-based plastic. We've made plastics as with as high as 80 percent natural fiber. Hmm. Um, and with that, you know, you're seeing around an 80 to 85 percent carbon reduction and an 80 to 85 percent microplastics end of life reduction. So that's hmm. the value there. That's why you want to buy BioFi is that it's you know, much, much greener um, on CO2 and end-of-life microplastics than any other plastic on Earth. The other bit here is we are licensing BioFi to compounders. So let me just back up and make sure that our listeners understand the plastics value chain. Yeah. So essentially, fuel companies like Shell, BP, um, you know, those, those types of companies, they make, you know, fuels. And plastic is a <laughs> byproduct of those fuels. Yeah. However, nobody uses the plastic that comes from Shell. It's not put into anything that you use. What has to happen first is that it's compounded. Um, so it's compounded with other additives. So like plasticizers, elasticizers, UV stabilizers, colorants, dyes, tons of different things to change the physical properties of that plastic to make it useful. Mm -hmm. So there's a set of businesses that do this work called compounders. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a machine called a twin screw extruder, which you might imagine has two screws. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, uh, and that machine is what is used to, to make the plastics that go into all of these familiar items that you see every day. Um, toys, tools, technology, transportation components, your car dashboard, your phone case, your, your glasses frames. I mean, the headphones we're wearing on our head, all of this is the same type of plastic. It's durable petrochemical plastic, right? Yeah. Um, then it goes to the injection molder, um, who makes the components for all the items I was just talking about by heating up those pellets and squirting them into to a mold. And then once they're squared into the mold, it comes out, it goes to the manufacturer who assembles all the pieces, packages it, markets it, and sells it uh, to you and me, right? So that's the plastics value chain. Yeah. Where we go in is we've developed a set of technologies for the compounders, right? The guys who are doing the mixing uh, okay. of the additives and the, and the normal plastic. What we're saying to them is, hey, use less plastic, replace it, replace that mass with you know, 50 to 80% of our treated biomass that we've prepared for you, and then use a particular technique and a particular screw for your twin screw extruder. Now, something to understand about those machines is the screws are interchangeable. So if you're a compounding business, one day you're doing a polypropylene run. So you use the polypropylene screw. The next day, you need to make a batch of polyethylene. So you take out the polypropylene screw and you put in the polyethylene screw. Mm -hmm. So Applied Bioplastics has developed a screw that makes the natural fiber composite actually work. It disperses it better, uh, disperses the cellulose amongst the plastic and creates a essentially a matrix inside that thermoplastic. Okay. The reason that's important is that matrix strengthens the plastic so that it is um, you know, comparable in strength to normal plastics, yeah. right? So we've developed the screw We've developed a particular feeding technique, um, and we've developed the chemical treatment that's necessary and the physical treatment that's necessary to make the cellulose work in that compounder. So we provide all of that to the compounder. We also help the compounder sell to the injection molder. So we, we help them with trials. We send engineers. We make sure that the trials go well. Um, and, and yeah, that's basically it. You know, what we, want, what we want to do and what we're raising money to do is to vastly expand our portfolio of available plastics. I was talking about those rapid prototyping facilities when we were uh -huh. talking about staff earlier. Yeah. That's the purpose of those is there's hundreds of thousands of grades of plastic available on the market. Yeah. Applied Bioplastics currently offers 14 grades. 
Um, so we've got some work to do yeah. to help shift the whole industry. And that's, that's the idea there is, is to create as many analogs of uh-huh. the existing plastic in the market using this cellulose as a base to replace as much of the plas- the durable plastics market as possible.